I'm going to present to you the work I did with Marc Fili this summer. Uh, so the work was done on Gambit Scheme. Okay, uh, so it's, it's fairly standard with uh, a front end and some back ends. So the front end takes uh, the scheme code and generates code for the GVM, the Gambit Virtual Machine. And then the back ends take that code and generate uh, their own target code. So currently there's a JavaScript back end and also a C back end. And uh, the C back end is the most mature and the most performant back end of the two and is in some ways the, implement uh, the reference implementation of Gambit. Uh, so for the C backend, the runtime library is written in Scheme and in C, and that's uh, important for a little bit later. So we thought we could get better performance. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, by generating native code instead of instead of C, so that's why we started the development of a native backend that targets x86 and ARM. Uh, so during the development, it occurred to us that it could be very useful to have interoperability of the code generated uh, by the C backend and the native backend. Um, so in other words, uh, being able to call functions compiled with the C backend from native code and uh, functions that, work that, that are compiled with the native backend from C code. Uh, and we call these um, jumps between C code and native code cross jumps. Uh, before showing you how, uh, I'll tell you a little, a little bit about why. So uh, as I said earlier, part of the runtime library is written in C. So for the native backend, we'd, we'd have to rewrite it again in uh, x86 or ARM. And we don't want to do that. So if we could just reuse the C implementation instead uh, for the garbage collector, uh, DOS interfaces uh, that would save us a lot of time. Uh, there are also some complex uh, scheme functions that we, com that we could compile with the native backend, but uh, it's not complete enough to do that yet. So uh, before we can do that, uh, we could at least use the C implementation of these functions. Uh, also, there are IO functions that are not part of the runtime library, but uh, are pretty difficult to implement. Uh, and they're platform dependent. So if you could just leave the implementation up to the C compiler, uh, that would again save a lot of time. And uh, there are some little functions, we call them primitives, uh, and we need to implement them for the native backend, but uh, for the time they're not implemented, uh, we could at least use uh, the C implementation. And uh, we could also want to have uh, the, the interoperability uh, so we could uh, compile part of a program with the C backend and another part with the native backend to use the, uh, the backends where they're, they're at their best. So here's the list of uh, conditions we think are necessary for the solution to be uh, a good one. So first, cross jumps should be transparent. Uh, so what we mean is that the code that calls a function shouldn't have to check if uh, the function was compiled with the native backend or the C backend. It should just call it using its own calling convention, and it should just work. Uh, so that means that uh, the existing code shouldn't uh, slow down when uh, not doing a cross jump. Also, because we're working on the native backend for performance reason, uh, we insist that the implementation of a function call from native code is a simple branch to address instruction. And uh, finally, the cost of a cross jump should be similar to uh, the cost of uh, a, a call using a trampoline uh, because they serve a different, uh, uh, they serve a similar purpose. Uh, so here's how the C backend works. Uh, the GVM ha has some registers, so they're stored inside the processor state. There's also a frame pointer, a heap pointer, and a program counter. And uh, the program counter is, um, points to the currently executing control point. And the control point is a procedure, a continuation. Um, yeah, and this field is used by the trampoline. And uh, also this, the C backend generates label structures and they're used to represent the uh, control points. So there is a header uh, like, how, like all memory allocated object. And uh, there's also a host field 
and the host field contains uh, the address of the C function that contains the code for that control point. So here's a simple example uh, to show you how the C backend works. So this uh, program prints the result of f of 9, and uh, f adds 1 and uh, computes the square, the, yeah, and squares the, the result. And uh, I just want to show you that there are non-tail calls and uh, tail calls. So there's uh, the call to square that's a tail call, and the, the call to uh, f isn't. So here's the host functions of the main f and square uh, of the main f and square functions. Uh, the the C code isn't really important, but what you should see uh, is that they all have switches. Uh, so that's the, the 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 job of the host function is to uh, dispatch uh, or control the execution and uh, execute the uh, correct control point and it uses the program counter. So this is part of the trampoline. And uh, each cases of the switch uh, are uh, basic blocks or control points. So I just want to show you how a function call is made. So here we call the uh, f function with uh, 9 as the argument. So first we place the uh, the argument in the first register, so that's uh, ps uh, a row r1, uh, and we uh, and we set it to nine, shifted by two because we use pointer pointer tagging, and uh, the tag for uh, for fixed names is zero zero. Then we set the continuation to uh, the call to f9, so we set the um, this this big expression is simply the address of uh, the second control point of main, the one that prints the result. Finally, we set the program counter to the function f, and then we return to the trampoline. And then the trampoline will call the function f, the, the function f for us. So for the, for the whole example, there's only four control points, two inside the uh, main host, one in f and one in square. and uh, the uh, value glow main, glow f, and glow square, they're all uh, the reference to the, the, they're all references to the control points, and they're all tagged. So here's the uh, execution. So at first, uh, the trampoline is executed, is called with the program counter set to the first control point of main. Uh, so it calls the host main, which then execute the first case. Uh, we call f, then return to the trampoline, which calls f, uh, which adds one, calls square, uh, return to the trampoline, calls square function, uh, the, the square control point. Uh, and then we uh, square the argument, set the program counter to the continuation, then return to the trampoline and print the result and exit. Uh, so this is uh, a, little, a little bit simplified. There are some optimizations that you can do. Uh, so the first one would be to, uh, instead of returning to the trampoline, to simply uh, jump at the start of the host function if you know that the uh, destination control point is in the same host function. Also, you could put all your control points inside the same host function. So that way you could uh, really reduce the um, the the amount of time you need to uh, return to the trampoline. Then you can use computed go-tos and um, cache part of the processor state inside, uh, inside variables to uh, encourage the C compiler to uh, use machine registers. Uh, so here's how the native backend works. Uh, I, won't, I won't go into too much detail, but I just want to show you uh, how it's different from the C backend. So first, it doesn't use a trampoline. Uh, then, because we have control over the register allocation, uh, we can put most of the processor state inside uh, the machine registers. So for example, this is the uh, register allocation for x86-64. Uh, and we also generate label structures. So finally, our solution. 
Uh, it uses three parts. The first one uh, is two functions. We call them bridge functions. Uh, and these functions are called when, uh, doing, w when a cross jump is made. Uh, and their job is to uh, move the, the processor state where the destination code expects it and then uh, resume the execution. Uh, the second part is uh, because we insist that, the, uh, that uh, a, a function call from native code is a simple branch to address instruction, we need to make sure that uh, the reference to a control point generated by the native backend uh, points inside machine code, so we need to uh, adjust the uh, label structure. And finally, we need to make sure that uh, both the C and, la and native label structures uh, support being called from the trampoline and from a simple branch to address instruction. So for the native backend, we, had, we add the host field, uh, uh, which contains the address of the two native bridge function, so that when the trampoline calls uh, a, a native function, it executes the native uh, bridge and then it can move the, the processor state and resume the execution. And uh, for the C backend, uh, we just add some uh, machine code where the, re where, the referen po where the reference points so that uh, when the native code calls a C label structure, that code gets executed and uh, that code simply calls the other bridge function, the from native bridge. So here's how the label structures look like. So as you can see, the reference uh, in both cases point to machine code. And uh, for uh, the native label structure, there's a host field which contains the two native bridge. And uh, for the C backend, we added uh, a, a code field which contains the from native, uh, a, a call to from native bridge. And uh, here's where the compiled code is placed. So as I showed you earlier, for the C backend, it's placed inside the host function. And for the native backend, it's placed at the end of the label structure. Uh, and there's uh, three dots, so it, it continues uh, for as long as, as needed. Uh, so when, the, uh, when a native function is called from the trampoline, uh, as I said earlier, the two native bridge uh, gets uh, the host gets loaded by the trampoline and uh, it's called, so the two native bridge is executed, uh, which then can jump in inside the machine code. And uh, when the C uh, function is called from, na from native code, the execution jumps inside the, uh, inside the code field, which executes the from native bridge, which can then uh, move the processor state and resume the execution using the trampoline. And uh, you really can go back and forth uh, between the two. Uh, you can call a C function. It can do uh, its own things and come back uh, to, na to na native code uh, later. And uh, there's really no, um, no, li no limitation. You can do uh, tell calls that way. Uh, so that doesn't support closures, uh, but it's a little bit more complicated. So see the paper for that. And, oops, and here's the implementation of the bridge functions. Uh, the, the code really isn't important, but uh, the, the, the overall characteristics are. So it's only one C function for both uh, the two bridges. Uh, and the, the C function is mostly inline assembly. Oh, and uh, yeah. The C function is to native bridge, and from native bridge is a simple label inside the, the bridge function. And uh, there are 18 and, 19, uh, and 15 machine instructions, and they're mostly loads. Yeah. Um, and every time the bridge function is executed, the trampoline is also executed. So the solution should be, uh, a, a cross jump should be at least, at least slower than yeah, it shouldn't be faster than the trampoline. So now the evaluation, we want to measure the overhead of a cross jump. So we use that simple program that uh, loops 100 million times and it repeatedly calls the deck function. 
And uh, we use multiple variants of that benchmark. Uh, so the first one is uh, we compiled the entire program using uh, the native backend only. Uh, then we use the C backend only, and we make sure that the DEC function is placed inside the same host, so we can use some optimizations. Uh, then we make sure that the DEC function is placed inside another host function, so that the trampoline is always used is, is always used when uh, the DEC function is called. And uh, finally, we compiled the DEC function with the C backend, and then we compiled everything else with the native backend, so that every time the DEC function is called, uh, it uses uh, the bridge function and the trampoline. So here are the times. It's uh, between two and fifty-eight times, uh, two and fifty-eight percent uh, slower than the uh, than the trampoline only time. Uh, and if we compare the uh, native only to the C uh, only benchmark with the trampoline, with the trampoline and without, uh, it's 14, fourteen times faster uh, than the benchmark that uses the trampoline and two point times faster than the benchmark that doesn't use it. So in conclusion, uh, our solution supports uh, all, all the conditions uh, that we have fixed. So cross jumps are transparent. Uh, the, native, the native jumps uh, are a simple uh, branch to address instruction and the cost of cross jumps is uh, negligible compared to uh, a trampoline and uh, that's uh, ideal for our use cases. Uh, the main one is uh, to support the development of the native backend so we can reuse the uh, C infrastructures uh, like, the, uh, like the garbage collector uh, but also the uh, benchmarking primitives and uh, we consider not implementing the IO functions in native code and just reuse the C implementation uh, seeing the, uh, the similar cost to the trampoline. Thank you. Um, well, can you repeat, please, because <laughs> I, 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 I didn't hear is, it. Is there anything interesting in how you're, you, you said that you can add multiple functions to a single oh. host function, mm -hmm. or even all the functions to a single host function? Yep. Uh, so in the latter case, is there a lot of pressure then on, on the intro procedural optimizer, or, and, and is there anything interesting in how you're choosing to do that mapping? Uh, no, we just, uh, w w when we choose the uh, second optimization, uh, we put all the functions uh, in, of a single module inside the same host function. And uh, I think that's based on the hypothesis that um, most functions call other functions that are in the same module. Um, but I don't know if, if we're doing uh, more optimization. And yeah, does that answer your question? Sure, you, you get some pretty huge... Yeah, but the, 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 there's a limit to that, uh, and it's the, the C compiler. Uh, otherwise, we would compile everything in the same host function, but it's, it, it doesn't scale uh, linearly. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. I have a question. Did you answer that just, just as a data point? So the whole uh, runtime system, or most, most of the runtime system is C, compiled to C, and when you use a single host, you know, some functions are like 50,000 modules to C, and you have about, uh, let's say, Other questions? Um, it seems to me that sort of Go is taking over C, right? And, uh, or WASM or you know, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's like uh, we're going to have uh, those sorts of backends also? Uh, they're not planned. Oh, okay. yeah. We Could you do that? With, with, or would, it, would you need, need different techniques? Uh, I'm pretty sure you could do something similar, but uh, I don't think you have the uh, level of control with Go um, that could
could be uh, that could enable such a technique because we really place machine code and we need to jump at specific addresses. Uh, so really, the, uh, the 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 combination of C and assembly is uh, ideal. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, I think you said, <laughs> because there was some noise, but uh, you, you said, is that the reason why you didn't, you didn't use LLVM? And uh, there, are other, there are other reasons why we, we want to generate native code, but uh, one of the main reasons is to have a really precise control over the instructions generated. Uh, so using LLVM kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> 